We're going to move right into the show where we talk uh, the lowdown for this first segment where we talk all things Apple. And I want to get into it because we got a lot to talk about because this week uh, Apple finally did their October event. It was the Unleashed uh, event and they pretty much gave us what we wanted it to hear, what we've been waiting on for so long. They've given us our MacBooks that we've been waiting on. But before I get that, uh, get to that, let's do the unimportant stuff that yeah. <laughs> Apple announced Badly. at the Unleashed event. <laughs> First <laughs> and foremost, uh, Apple announced a new subscription service for Apple Music. It's only $5 a month, but the catch is it is only accessible via Siri. So you have to invoke Siri to access any of Apple's music library. No uh, opening up an app, no going to a website. It's all via Siri's voice. But again, it is a less expensive entry level version to the traditional $9.99 for Apple Music. And I think they did this because they want to beef up the adoption of the home pods. Uh, again, like you, if you don't already know, the home pod and the home pod mini, which the home pod mini is actually their device because they pretty much discontinued the first generation of the home pod, but that has no interface. It's all done via Siri as well. But what I think they're trying to do with this new voice subscription is to, uh, like I mentioned, get more adoption to the HomePod so you don't have to connect your iPhone to your HomePod mini in order to utilize Apple Music. And the reason why I say that is because there have been some issues, especially if, if you have multiple people in the house, you know, I'll let, you know, uh, Nika give us her um, use case and her, you know, day in the life using her HomePod minis. But like, for instance, in my case, um, I have myself, I have my wife, and I have two kids who use Apple devices. So it could get a little tricky when you're trying to, or uh, who's the voice or who's music library, who's, you know, whose profile are, are you getting when you're coming in the house trying to use Siri on a HomePod? So I think what they're trying to do is they're giving you this a uh, five dollar uh, subscription to where you just use Siri, and she's smart enough now to kind of know who's talking and can kind of curate or provide a music um, experience based on your voice. So I just wanted to get your take on uh, this new subscription service, and do you think it's going to take off? Um, I think it makes sense, um, especially with the way the HomePod Minis work. Um, I think we talked about them when they first came out. I was super excited about them. Um, because I don't have like Alexa or anything like that. So I have three HomePod minis. I have one on each floor of my house. Um, and the way that it works, it's really tricky. Sometimes it works seamlessly and sometimes it does not. Like the HomePod in my office, it's hit or miss. Um, and you have to, so say if I'm listening to a podcast in the podcast app, and I'm listening to it on my phone and I want to transfer it to my HomePod mini. Typically you should just be able to tap it or if mm -hmm. I put my phone close to my uh, HomePod mini that I have downstairs, mm -hmm. it'll kind of say, do you want to connect? If you click connect, sometimes it connects, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes I just give up altogether and say, you know what? I'll just listen through the speaker on my phone because I don't have time to kind of fill with, fool with that. So it makes sense from that aspect that they have a separate um, subscription service where you can just use Siri and that makes it, I'm assuming, a, a more seamless process, but that is all predicated on the fact that they sell the HomePod minis. If they don't really sell them, if people aren't buying into them, then this subscription service, service really doesn't do you any good. So you right. need to kind of have the two together in order for it to work. And you have to kind of be like a person who maybe already has them and sees the different types of issues that go with, you know, using the HomePod mini and your phone. And, you know, we talk about the ecosystem in Apple and how things kind of all work together really well. I have to say the HomePod minis, they don't work as well as I would okay. expect them to. And at one point I was thinking about returning them because okay. it was just not 
it just wasn't it just wasn't worth it just gotcha. wasn't well, working so w- well hopefully um with these new this new subscription uh maybe they'll get some more adopters of the home pop yeah. mini and maybe that will encourage them to step up their uh, seamless experience when it comes to them so speaking of trying to get more people to adopt the home pod mini uh, another um a way to try to get people to uh buy them is they've added more colors to the uh home pod mini uh the color yellow the color orange and they have a navy blue uh was announced at apple's event this week that uh goes with the already the white one that they already had and the space gray one space so they've gray. got a total uh, five colors for me to pick from uh still same price uh but again if you add that with the subscription service on its own without an iphone without an ipad you pretty much have a whole home audio system mm-hmm. if you just bought the home pods and the five dollar subscription service so mm-hmm. maybe that be a way for people to get into the apple ecosystem maybe you know they they do a smart they started a smart home with the home pod minis and because the sound of these things are really great when they play they they have a really okay. they emit the sound so the actual usage of them is is good it's just you know getting it going is, right is right. the one that's the kind of you know ticky and i gotcha. don't particularly care about the colors maybe people do i all have i have all white because it just kind of sits in the background and kind of merges in it's not anything like ostentatious but maybe some people want that so maybe they're kind of catering to both sides if you want some color some razzle dazzle or if you want to keep it muted just for it to kind of blend in then you can do that as well all right all right so uh, speaking of music uh they've launched their third generation airpods uh they look similar to the airpods pro that's been out for about a year or so now they've added magsafe wireless charging so if you have a mag safe charger you can actually use that new case um, they add spatial audio something that's found on the airpods pro and they add a lower uh, uh, a, a better driver for low-end music think bass you know if you if that's what you like to listen to uh they're uh, available for 179 and again like it's like the home pod mini they're available for pre-order now the difference between the airpods generation 3 and the AirPods Pro is the AirPods 3 do not have active noise cancellation. So think of your uh, current AirPods that just have the regular um, the regular shape uh, for the ear uh, versus the AirPods Pro that have that silicon tip that really kind of uh, fits Seals more snug it. in your mm-hmm. ear that gives you that um, that better sound for the uh, active noise cancellation. The AirPods 3 do not have that, but like I said, they have the spatial audio, they have the better sound, the adaptive adaptive EQ on the AirPods 3 without the price. So the difference between AirPods 3 is they are 179, the AirPods Pro are 249. So if price is an issue and you really could care less, less about the active noise cancellation, you might want to jump on these uh my question to you is uh will you get rid of your airpods pro and just stick with the regular airpods or will you stick with what you've got even though the airpods 3 have the magsafe charger i like the noise canceling i like to be able to go outside and you know i can tune the world out from the grocery store or doing whatever to kind of just insulate myself so i'm good with what i have so all right no update for me yeah, but but for some of those people looking to uh, get into the AirPods RAM, which they're doing pretty good, uh, you might want to take a look at these, or mm-hmm. you can get the Generation Two AirPods for one hundred and twenty nine dollars. Right. So you definitely have now you have multiple choices at multiple kind like a points. low, mid, and a high right. range, right? And I then feel. then stupid high with the AirPods Max. <laughs> do you even use those anymore? Yeah, do I do. Use- I do. Okay, uh, yeah. Not 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 frequently um but every once in a while when i don't want to disturb the family like when i'm watching a movie because i'm the only one that can stay up at night <laughs> i'll put those in and uh but, and also i could go downstairs in the living room and watch tv without mm-hmm. the airpods while everybody's upstairs asleep but <laughs> i don't want to then at two or three in the morning have to schlep myself upstairs, upstairs. <laughs> so i'll use my airpods max upstairs and upstairs bedroom 
Uh, so while my wife is asleep, I can listen to music. And then when I'm done, I can just take them off and just roll over and, and, go, roll to over and go to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's when I use them again. COVID kind of messed all the stuff up where I go outside. So mm -hmm. uh, once everything kind of not gets back to normal, once we kind of normalize COVID, then I'll probably mm -hmm. venture out more. I'll probably carry them with me. All right. So moving up right along, we're getting a little bit closer to the meat and potatoes. Uh, the um, new silicon chips for the upcoming macbook pros have been announced uh, we thought we were going to get just one m1x or m2 chip but actually what apple did is they broke it up into two m1 chips you have the m1 pro and now you have the m1 max to go alongside the previous generation M1, which they're still selling those. Those are still available. So now you have three new generation chips, the M1, M1 Pro, the M1 Max. So let me real quick do some specs for the M1 Pro. It has an eight core CPU with six performance cores and two efficiency cores, it has a 14 core graphics processing unit, has a 16 core neural engine, and it has 200 gigabits per second of memory bandwidth. The M1 Max has a 10 core CPU with eight performance cores and two efficiency cores versus the M1 Pro that just has eight. It has a 32 core GPU versus the M1 Pro just has a 14 core. It has a 16 core newer engine and it has 400 gigabits per second memory bandwidth as opposed to 200 with the M1 Pro. So I'll let you kind of jump in and talk about how impressed you were with the core stuff because chips are not my not my lane all i know is uh these sound pretty good uh they're what i'm looking for as opposed to what i have now uh so i'm definitely picking the pro but i'll let you kind of give your um impressions of what apple announced as far as these new chips yeah i was pleasantly surprised that we got two chips instead of the one. Mm -hmm. So that was a bit of, of a surprise, a welcome one. Um, and honestly, um, I would have, if they just came out with the bigger screen with the M1 that's on the 13 inch, I still would have bought it mm -hmm. because based on the videos and the benchmarking um, that I saw from those, people were super impressed and they were okay. like, this is lightning flat fast so if you just do like a basic comparison of you know the m1 that we got you know was it last year in a last year and year? a half maybe two years ago yeah and the m1 pro and even up to the m1 max i'm even more you know excited about what this performance is going to look like they put up some you know graphics to kind of show what the intel processor will do what the the previous m1 will do and what the new m1 pro and the m1 max will do and you can kind of see the levels, I mean, at a very high level, just to kind of give you a spatial view of, of what, you know, the processors will do. So um, needless to say, I'm super excited about it. You can get all the specs with all the different cores and, you know, the GPUs and all the neural engines, that kind of stuff. Just a bunch of words to say that these things are lightning fast. It doesn't require a lot of extra effort from the machine itself mm -hmm. to either cool down the machine or to handle any of the processing it doesn't need some of the extra effort that your traditional intel chip you know machines whether pc or mac would need this thing is like your your silent killer it can you know really you know have some high performance computing on it um while not exerting a lot of effort so okay. um, all right so i'm really looking forward to seeing that in action